Welcome back. In this Merchant Navy how-to video, I'm covering the basics of manual radar plotting. While ARPA has pretty much removed the need to do manual radar plotting on board our ships, it's still a subject that is examined as part of our commercial license, and it is a skill that is useful to have, as it not only allows you to understand how the radar is calculating the information it is displaying to you, if something goes wrong and ARPA becomes unavailable, you will be able to conduct manual plots. When plotting targets, it's important to pick a plotting time period and stick to it throughout. I recommend choosing a target plotting interval of either 3 or 6 minutes, as this makes the mathematics easy, but you can pick any time period you wish. It's also important to be aware that your own vessel's speed and heading need to remain unchanged throughout the plotting period. Similarly, if the target alters course or speed, you will have to restart the plotting process. To show the basics, I am only going to plot a single target. In reality, you can plot multiple targets at the same time. The first thing we've got to do is get our plotting sheet. These are usually carried on board your vessel and will look similar to the one shown here. If you wish, you can download a copy from my website and the links in the description below. In order to make it easier for you to see, I have marked range rings on my plotting sheet, with each ring representing one nautical mile. When plotting on your own sheets, you can either use a ruler and treat one centimetre as being one nautical mile, or select your own scale based on the circumstances. Ideally, just like Goldilocks, you don't want your plot to be too small or too big. For the purpose of this example, we are on board a vessel which is heading north, at a speed of 20 knots. As we're plotting relative to ourselves, we are always located in the centre of the plotting sheet. Firstly, let's mark our vessel's heading on our sheet. At 11am, we notice a blip on our radar screen, bearing 040 degrees, at a range of 8 nautical miles, so we plot this on our sheet. Three minutes later, we observe that the blip is still there, and is moved to a bearing of 038 degrees, at a range of 6 nautical miles. Again, we plot this on our sheet. Another three minutes has passed, and the target is now bearing 036 degrees, and is 6 nautical miles away. Before we continue, it's important to be aware that we need to have a minimum of three plots in order to complete our calculations. Any less than three is considered to be scanty radar information for the purpose of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, and just plain inaccurate for the purpose of real life. In order to comply with common practices, we are going to label our first position as O, which stands for origin, and we label our last plotted target position as A. Ideally, the three targets should be in line. If they are not, then the target has altered her course or speed, and we need to continue plotting the target until we have at least three that are in alignment. As our three target plots are in line, we can draw a line through O to A, which we are going to extend all the way across the plotting sheet. This line, which we'll refer to as OA, and its extension, is our target's relative line of approach and it gives us some important information, the most important of which is if we're going to collide. If this line was nowhere near the centre of the plotting sheet, in reality we would stop now, as it is passing clear of us, however we would continue to monitor the target in case the situation was to change. However, in our example the relative line of approach is going near to us, and it tells us some important information. Firstly, we can see if the target is passing ahead or astern of us, in this case it is passing ahead, and we can see at a glance how far it will cross our bow, in this case 2 nautical miles. We could also calculate the time this will occur if we wished, using the same method as I am going to show for calculating time to CPA. Secondly, we can also see the closest point of approach, or CPA for short, and the time that it will occur. To do this, we draw a line from the centre of our plotting paper, perpendicular to a relative line of approach. We then name this point C. Now we measure the length of this line, which gives us the closest point of approach, which in this case is 1.6 nautical miles, which we're going to stick into our table on the plotting sheet. If we were interested in the bearing of the target at the closest point of approach, then this line also represents that bearing. To work out the time of closest point of approach, we measure the distance OA, 
and the distance AC. We then calculate the TCPA by dividing the distance AC by the distance OA and multiplying by our plotting interval. So in this case, we're doing 2.9 divided by 1.03 and multiplying it by 6, which gives us 17 minutes, which we're also going to stick into the table. The information we have already calculated is the most important. If we're happy with the closest point of approach, we would simply stop now and continue to monitor the target to ensure it doesn't alter course or speed. You might wonder why I chose a target plotting interval of 3 minutes. The reason is this gives me a total period of 6 minutes, which makes the mathematics extremely easy, as you can simply divide or multiply by 10 to calculate speeds and distances. However, you can use whatever interval you wish, as long as the time between target plots is the same. So as I mentioned, we are travelling at 20 knots. So in the period of 6 minutes, we will have travelled 2 nautical miles. We now plot a vector representing our own ship's speed and course. To do so, we draw a line of 2 nautical miles length out of the origin target plot. We then name this line WO, which stands for Way of Own. We also now join W to A, which gives us a vector representing the true course and speed of the target vessel. WA stands for Way of Another. We can now work out the true speed of the target vessel by measuring the length of the vector WA and multiplying it, in this case by 10, giving us a true speed of 8.8 knots. In order to work out the true course of the target, we extend the WA line and then transfer it through the centre of our plotting sheet, where we can then read off the true course of the target, in this case 293 degrees. The last stage of our radar plot is the aspect, which is the relative bearing of the observing vessel from the target vessel. In line with convention, we consider this to be the angle on the bow of the target vessel, which is expressed as a value between 0 and 180 degrees, named red or green, depending on whether our vessel is on the port or starboard side of the target. In other words, it tells us what lights we should be able to observe on the target vessel. To calculate the aspect, we can either do it mathematically or by reading the values off our plotting sheet. Our last observed bearing of the target was at 1106, when the bearing was 036 degrees. So we take the reciprocal of this bearing, which is 216 degrees, and mark it on our plotting sheet. We then either measure the angle between the target's heading and reciprocal of our last bearing with the protractor or calculate mathematically by calculating the difference between the target's heading and reciprocal of the last bearing, which in this case gives us 77 degrees. As we're on the port side of the other vessel, we name it red. In order to avoid cluttering up the plot in this example, I have removed the earlier stages as I progressed. In reality, you would do everything on the same plot, which will resemble what is shown here. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this short video useful and you feel like it, please click the like button. I'll be posting other how-to videos when I get time, so if you want to be notified when I do, click the subscribe button.